when I went into the polling places that morning about a quarter to seven, stayed around into a polling place that has four precincts and I didn't see anybody in there voting, I knew that we were in trouble because those were traditionally the, the working people and they were not coming out to vote before they went to work, as is their custom. Sawyer attributes the lack of voter participation in the ward to a problem that he says is emblematic of the deterioration of the ward as a civic leader. We're not relevant here anymore. The city of Chicago doesn't treat the sixth ward as they once treated them. And that's because we don't turn out votes. Let's be honest. You know, things, if, if they need to get a candidate elected, they don't come to the sixth ward for help any longer. We were once a number one vote any ward in the city of Chicago, not just number one black, number one ward, period. Now, I don't even know how far down the ladder we are because we don't have the connection. We only get 15,000 people to vote in an election where a, a, a mayor, is a new mayor, will be elected. That's a problem. That means people aren't being engaged. They're not being informed and, and getting excited about what's going on. But Lyle says Sawyer's assertions about why voter turnout in the ward has plummeted is plain wrong. It's intellectually dishonest. Uh, this is not 20 years ago or 30 years ago, and he knows that one of the big incentives that people had to participate in the electoral pro uh, process 20 and 30 years ago was the machine, were the patronage jobs that were offered to people that worked out here. Uh, many of the people that are supporting him now are supporting him because they got jobs through his father, they got jobs with his father. Those times are over. There's a thing called Shackman. So you don't have that incentives to go out here and have people working precincts anymore. The neighborhood has changed. If I have the highest population of seniors 10 years ago when the census was taken, it is logical to assume that some of them are no longer with us. And we certainly mourn their passing because those were the most actively participant, most active participants in the electoral process. It meant something to them. Those were the children of the struggle. They remembered that their parents couldn't vote. Leonard White has lived in the ward since 1948 and says Sawyer's father, the late Eugene Sawyer, helped him get a job many years ago. He says he is now putting his support behind Roderick in part because of the job his father did as alderman of the six wards decades ago. This street in particular, from the Dan Ryan to the Cottage Grove at night, you can't walk up and down the street, 75th is the same way. They let this deteriorate so bad. The youngsters are out on the street all type of night, doing God knows what, but we all know what they're doing. And she, she I can't say whether, she's not getting the job done. She needs to clean up this ward, which she can. Put somebody else in there. Rod Sawyer's father had a good track record of keeping this this war intact. It needs to get back to them. One of the main issues of concern for residents in the sixth ward is crime and the lack of safety on main streets in the ward, particularly 79th Street. And it seems to be one of the biggest threats to Alderman Lyle's campaign. When people talk to me during the municipal and say, what are you running against? I said, I'm running against crime. I had two police officers murdered in my ward. Those were horrendous crimes and I think that while the the actual numbers of crime have gone down in our community. The statistics show that. Those two incidents overshadow everything else. People don't feel safe anymore. What we need to do on 79th Street is to diversify the types of businesses that are there. We have tried for many years to create a calmer 79th and Cottage by removing Happy's Liquor Store. We tried to replace it with a CVS, but they were not willing to sell at that time. And there's still discussions because we want to remove the reason that people give when the police accost them and they say, why are you in this corner? Oh, well, I'm going to this place. Well, if you remove the place, they don't have any reason to be there. Alderman Lyle has used tips to bring businesses to the Chatham area and has plans to do so with another tip that is in the works. But Sawyer, who is calling for a moratorium on any new tips until the program is audited, says the plan is all wrong. We have currently a a old vacant property where the old Kennedy King sat. I know there was a, a TIF proposal there, and it's my understanding that the TIF proposal included um, some strip malls and maybe some housing. We just talked about housing. We have a glut of housing stock right now. We have an abundance of inventory of housing that we should be reactivating and putting back on the roads that we have. Uh, we should be working on infill housing as opposed to new housing there. 
I would propose that we instead use that property for either a light industrial or commercial venture where we can bring in companies that will provide good paying jobs to residents here in the Sixth Ward. Without a TIF, how are we going to get anyone to come in and rebuild and invest in that old site? There's no one knocking on our door saying, oh, now you got all this vacant land. I'm ready to come in and build A, B, C, or D. You have to incentivize businesses to come in. We wouldn't have had Chatham Club developed without that TIF because there were environmental issues there. They had to remediate that whole site. It was an old Canfield plant. And even with the TIF, the developer ended up coming out in the red. So the TIF in our community has worked as it should have worked. And the new TIF that we are going to pass on April 13th is going to serve as an economic generator for East Inglewood, which is the area that I represent. Sawyer pointing to Alderman Lau's vote in favor of the parking meter lease as proof that she may not be the best person for the job, given the state of the city budget and the impact the deal has had on it. But Alderman Lyle says she voted yes for the deal in order to save jobs. When we were presented with the parking meter vote, not only was it the only option available to balancing the city budget, but it prevented the layoff of hundreds of families. Uh, in December. They would have been laid off just before Christmas that year because those are the kind of hard choices you have to make sitting in that seat. And based on that and weighing the options, we elected to go with the parking meter deal, which in hindsight, of course, we would not have done again. But you don't want to, you don't want to lay people off November and December of any year. These are, these are not numbers. These are people. They have families. They have children. They have bills. So we were trying to keep as many people employed and balance the city budget, and that was why that vote was taken. The prospect of video gambling is another hot topic in the Sixth Ward race. Alderman Lyle is opposed to the potential revenue generator, while Sawyer thinks it's something that should be looked at. I am very, very uh, opposed to video gambling. Uh, it's not like a casino where people are going to be at a location. You're talking about putting video gambling in gas stations, in convenience stores, places that traditionally are our biggest sources of complaints about loitering. And now you're going to have another group of people there, and you're going to have people knowing that maybe somebody went into the gas station and came out and they won some money, so maybe I'm going to target them. No, I'm totally opposed, and I think it will increase all of the negative things that people point to about Cottage Grove and 79th Street, because that's really what they're talking about, 79th and Cottage and it sort of, it radiates from that area. Alderman Lyle has garnered the support of Mayor elect Rahm Emanuel in the Sixth Ward race. Sawyer says she may have received his support due to her record of voting with Mayor Richard Daly on numerous issues. But Lyle says Sawyer's assertions are nothing more than those expected from a scorned candidate. I never received a call from uh, the mayor elect. I never got a chance to discuss my vision for the Sixth Ward. And obviously if the current alderman is voting 98% with the current mayor. Maybe he felt that he could rely upon a good vote uh, with her being a part of his administration. I did not, you know, stand by his door and ask for his support. I, based on the conversations, I mean, based on the newspaper accounts, I was at least expecting a phone call to talk to me about my vision for the war before he made his decision. But he made a choice. He made a choice already. That's fine. We're moving forward because we're going to be successful on April 5th. And he'll get the chance to talk to me, but then he'll talk to me with no agenda. I don't have to be beholden to him at any level. Well, first, people, because he wasn't in city council and because he has nothing else to point to, he can't point to his own record, so he has to take shots at mine. Um, but people don't understand that when the mayor would present a item to the city council between the presentation and the vote except in very rare instances there was negotiation going on we had briefings we said oh no I don't like that I think this this needs to be changed and because of his willingness to make changes that's why he got people going with him he didn't present things to us and say this is it we don't need to talk about it vote for it because I said that that never happened in City Hall regarding the the new the new administration and whether or not my support for, from uh, the mayor-elect is indicative of anything, it's very interesting and it's almost hypocritical for my opponent to raise that issue since he was actively soliciting the support 
of Mayor Elect Emanuel. When he did not get it, he decided to use it as a tool and a weapon against me, saying, oh, that means she's going to be a rubber stamp. Well, my conversations with the Mayor Elect and his people have been that he wanted someone, A, who knew the job, who didn't have to learn on the job, and so that's me. B, someone who's not afraid to tell you what they think, right or wrong, as to how it affects their community, that would be me. Someone who understands how things get done in City Hall and how it is not, it is not always about me, it's not always about the other person, it's about what's best for the entire city, not just a ward, and that would be me. Uh, I've never been asked by any person to not be who Fredrina is. I have never been asked to be a member of some sort of a, a combine where everything he says goes, and I don't think he's asked anyone else, but I know he's never asked me of that. So, no, I'm not going to be a uh, part of a rubber stamp because I don't think that's what he wants. Okay. At least I hope it's not because that's not what's going to happen.